Hey everybody, welcome back to Live on Stage. We're here with me, with Lucio, and we have a guest here. He's a singer, he's an actor, he's a dancer. I don't know what he does, but he's here on Live on Stage. So let's see what, he, what makes him tick, what makes him boogie. His name is Mariano Vidal. Mariano Vidal, aprende en español, caballero. Estamos aquí en nuestro estudio con el cantante, el tenor increíble, lírico, Mariano Vidal. Yo no sé si este hombre canta, si baila, si va a las calles, si va a las calles. Y no sé por qué tiene pelo blanco. Mariano Vidal, díganos, ¿de dónde salió usted? Si es japonés, si es ruso. Si es cubano, si es de las Islas Canarias. No, nacido en Cuba. Uh, I was born in, uh, well, many years ago, several decades ago. That's why I have the white hair. And I uh, uh, came to, uh, from Cuba to the United States in 1961 in the Peter Pan program. I was one of 14,000 boys and girls that left Cuba without their parents. That's uh, incredible. Tell us, how, uh, for the people that don't know what the Peter Pan uh, experience was like, uh, how did you come? Did you come by yourself? Did you come with your family? What was that experience like, and how did it form you as an artist? Uh, it didn't form me as an artist at all, because that was a period of time where I stopped singing. I started singing at a very early age. I was about five years old. But to answer your question, it was very difficult and trying times, because my brother and I came here without our parents. So it was extremely difficult. Did your parents ever make it uh, to the U.S.? Yes, thank God for that. They came about uh, a year later. Now, Mariano, you, uh, uh, tell us about your singing career. You, we know you're an artist. I know you're a singer. I'm just uh, joking around with the audience because they, they call me up and when I don't do that, so I have to do it for them, you know. My friend at Castaneda, Havana, New York, doesn't like when I do that. So, but, uh, but anyway, so I'm trying to reach a middle ground. Anyway, forget about me. It's not about me today. It's about you. Tell us about your art. Tell us, what, you know, why you start singing. How did it happen? And you get family support. A little bit of that. Now, nobody in my family uh, sang or nobody in my family were musicians, aside from the women in the family. And in old Cuba, all the ladies played the piano. And I was uh, inclined at a very early age to play the piano, but my parents wouldn't hear of it uh, because that was not a thing for the man to do. And, um, well, to make the long story short, I was allowed to sing, and I started singing in the, uh, the boys' choir at a very early age. And I remember that my brother, who was a star... Uh, Uh, a singer, child soprano, if you will, kept telling the priest, you got to listen to my, my brother, you have to listen to my brother. So one day when I was five or six, my, brother, my mother brought me hand in hand to the chapel where they were having rehearsals, and the, the, the father, who was the, the choir master, uh, heard me sing, and, um, and, and he said, or so I'm told, ¿Quién te mandó aquí, Papa Dios? So he, in other words, he said, who sent you here? Uh, the uh, the uh, God the Father, uh, so that was uh, 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 probably a lot lore. That's probably not true, but that's what what I heard my entire life, and I sang in the choir until uh, we came to the United States, and then of course with all the trials and tribulations of being in exile and being a refugee, and um, uh, not having enough of anything, um, I just applied myself academically until I had an opportunity to go back and sing, and I did. And it was pretty much thanks to my wife uh, who got me in touch with a, uh, a couple, uh, Vittorio Molillo and Tony D'Andrea, that were formidable voice teachers in Fort Lee, New Jersey, ma many, many years ago. And my wife and I have been married for, for a long, long time. I studied with them for several years. And I remember that I first, uh, the, about the only thing that I, that I and I'm sorry if I'm talking too much, you're not asking me any questions. The first thing that he asked me to sing was, he said, well, sing something that you know. And back in those days, about the only thing that I knew was Granada, right? The Agustin Lara, the Mexican song, Granada, Tierra. And I remember the teacher saying, no, 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 none of that Spanish trash. You're going to learn opera. So I said, okay. So for many years, it was opera, opera, Neapolitan songs, opera, and opera, and opera. And it was only after many, many years that I kind of rediscovered Cuban songs and Tarzuela which is our, uh, uh, you know, our Spanish operetta, if you will, and that also in Cuba we had a lot of Tarzuela and, and, and many other countries, South America, the Philippines, Tarzuela, one of them is Maria Lao, and the Spanish uh, Tarzuelas, La Gran Via, all those beautiful uh, um, uh, what mo uh, what modes of music. And uh, that's what I uh, started picking up uh, years later. So you basically started singing since you were in Cuba, you came to this country, and that's when you found uh, that you really had a knack for or a love for, for singing and performance, and, and based on, on your experiences in school, they said, hey, this is what you should be singing, you should be singing opera. Uh, about when did you, did you find that, you discover Hispanic music or Latin music, for, uh, uh, aside from Sarsuelas? Well, the first time that I entered a vocal competition, I won first prize. 
and it was for a Spanish uh, voice. And um, uh, right then and there, I met this incredible pianist who was actually accompanying a competitor. And I saw this guy and I heard that music and I said, my God, who, who wrote that stuff? And somebody said, Ernesto Laguna. Is it Ernesto Laguna, the, the great Cuban composer? So I said, I didn't know he wrote songs for people to sing classical lyrical songs. I thought it was all instrumental. So after that, I applied myself and I coached with uh, Gilberto Perez La Bastida, that we all know in, the, in these uh, environs for uh, several years. And that's how I rediscovered the Cuban sound and the Spanish sound. Now, do you still do the opera or do you do more sarsuela? So you do like uh, the contemporary uh, Latin stuff or Cuban stuff or the Latin standards? I do pretty much everything. I, I don't like to be on stage anymore because I don't like to work that hard. And I could never get my stage left and then my stage right. And then uh, there's an owner, your other left. And, and stuff like that. So I don't want to be on stage doing operas anymore. Uh, what I do now is I do a lot of concerts. And I have, as a matter of fact, in, in a couple of weeks, uh, we have uh, a beautiful concert coming up uh, with the Delaware Valley Opera. It's called Voices of the Valley. And it's a tri-series. In other words, it's a, uh, it's a series of different concerts. Uh, the first one is Spanish. So in that concert, I'm thrilled because I'm going to be doing Atargo Argentino, El Día Que Me Quieras, I'm going to do Alma Llanera, Venezolana, Huram in Mexico, I'm going to be singing Cuban songs, I'm going to be singing the, the, the song from the Dominican Republic, Preciosa, Preciosa, de, de, de Rafael Hernández de Puerto Rico, and a couple of zarzuelas. Uh, also, uh, joining me on stage will be a wonderful soprano, Emily Storrs, and the great Metropolitan Opera tenor, Nico Castell. Wow, pretty impressive. Now, so from what I gather, you sing in English, you sing in Spanish. Do you, do you have a, a language that you prefer to sing in? Or, and, do you, and following that question, do you sing in other languages, being that uh, Italian and German are the operatic uh, languages? I never did sing an, an op a German opera, and, and probably, uh, probably that's the best thing that I could, could do because German is a very difficult language, at least for me. I have managed to sing... Uh, a German song here and there, like Dainis My Ganses Herz and Vienna City of My Dreams. I don't know if you know those beautiful melodies. But I, stay, I try to stay away from, from German. Um, sung in, in, in French. Uh, I, I like the language, the, my, my la preferred language is, is, the, is the language or the tongue that I'm, sing I'm singing at the moment. If it's a Neapolitan song, it's, it's just an incredibly beautiful language, dialect. It's just so rich and voluptuous that when you sing, uh, I don't know, uh, what is the, you know, like um, Oso Le Mio, you know, to, to just to, to the first one that comes to mind, it is so rich and, and an incredible substance and tremendous feeling. But somebody once said to me, he says, oh, my God, you're Spanish. You're so, so I like singing in Spanish, obviously. It is, a, it is a beautiful tongue, a beautiful language, and I enjoy it. I enjoy singing in, in English, in I Spanish. And English. Now tell us some of the people that, that uh, you've performed with or some of the people that have accompanied you, uh, some of your friends, a little anecdote, you know, throw here and there, throw, throw some names around. I throw them all the way around just to make myself feel important. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I don't know. Uh, one of the incredible nights that I ever remember was Meme Solis. I don't know if you, if you know Meme Solis. I was hoping you mentioned Lucio, Lucio Fernandez, but okay, we'll take Meme Solis. Well, no, but uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about um, who else? Who was that incredible Cuban? Alfredo Munar. These are incredible, these are big Cuban names from you, you know, decades when, past. When you say incredible Cuban, I, once again, I hope you said Lucio <laughs> Fernandez, but, but what, go ahead. Keep on going. No, no, I'm, to, I'm going back decades, of course. You know, you're a young guy. 25. 25, right here right now. I'm, I'm pushing 30 myself. And uh, so, uh, oh yeah, no, no, it's, uh, I have, I have uh, the anecdotes, uh, I sang for Celia Cruz, uh, I, uh, Bebo Valdez had the piano, and, and I remember, I forget what she says, Bebo, uh, de donde viene, where does, uh, I forget the, 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 the rhythm invention that he, that he created, and I said, where did that come from, and he looked at me like, I was, what is this guy, nuts, it come from La Clave, so he sat down to play, uh, I forget what I asked him. I forget, and so here it is, Bebo Valdez at the piano, and I'm singing to, and so I have a lot of tremendous, wonderful memories. And, and you're a tenor, obviously, I, I think. No, I'm a bass. No, I'm a tenor, and, and oh, and for, I know my, one of my best friends is like my brother, Paquito de Rivera, you know, uh, he doesn't play the piano, at least I've never seen him play, you know, he sits down and he, 
he sat on my piano. He he kind of uh, uh, tickles the ivories a little bit. But uh, and Brenda Feliciano, the great soprano, Pablo Singer, uh, you know, I don't know Pablo Singer, great conductor, and uh, I did a Maria Lo. Not that I was Maria Lo. I was El Niño Fernando. Many years ago, with Brenda Feliciano singing the role of Maria Lao and Pablo Singer at the Batana Town Hall, I've sang at NJ Pack with uh, Paquito and Brenda at a Wild Carnegie, a Wild Recital Hall of Carnegie Hall, where we did a um, a um, the uh, Paquito's uh, a composition of a parody, the Cecilia Valdez, uh, called Cecilio Valdez, El Rey de La Habana. It's a contemporary operetta. And uh, I'm honored that Paquito asked me to, uh, so I kind of inaugurated, along with Brenda, a couple of excerpts from that opera, from that opera operetta. It's really, it's more like an opera, because there's not too much dialogue. And we hope that one day, sooner rather than later, this op operetta, opera, uh, is going to hit the world, and it'll, it'll be taken uh, to Europe and many other places. So we're looking forward to that. Sassuela is almost like a lost art, isn't it? Tarzuela is, uh, unfortunately, it, it is. Um, you know, I did in New York City, believe it or not, in New York City, I did uh, El Dudo la Africana, and I did La Tabernera del Puerto. No puede ser, esa mujer es buena. You know, you know right? Uh, and uh, so every once in a while, somebody has the energy and the guts to kind of bring it back. Pablo Singer did it with Maria Lao. And uh, so I hope it's, I hope we're going through a cycle. Uh, I know that about 20, 25 years ago, Placer Domingo brought it from from uh, Spain to Madison, of all places, Madison Square Garden a couple of times. It was very thrilling. I remember seeing Victoria Los Angeles, um, um, may may God rest her soul, at the town hall, where she also, Victoria Los Angeles, one of the greatest uh, sopranos ever, and she she was big in Tuzarzuela also. You know, I got stuck when you say Carnegie Hall, and I'm thinking, from Carnegie Hall to live on stage. That sounds real good to me. Uh, anyway, we have uh, a lot of uh, Mariano left, and in fact, let's just cut right to a clip because this is incredible hearing you sing. It's uh, quite a pleasure. Uh, Mariano, thank you for being here. Thank you for giving us the interview. I hope you come back again. But right now, we're going to check you out singing. A, a, last, a last message to the audience? No, to the audience, that um, I, um, I'm so lucky for the day that we our paths crossed. And you have asked me an occasion to, to, to sing for you in Union City. And uh, just wonderful, memorable experiences. And, and meeting Megan and, and, and Jay and, and uh, William and Anna. It's just terrific. So I thank you for that. Uh, thank you. But of course, what he really means, it was a pleasure to meet me. You know, Anna and Jay, they're okay. And Willie, man, he's all right. And Megan, that tough director, producer that I have. But uh, I, I, got, I can't go there because they'll cut my camera right off. So I got to deal with this. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's go check out Mariano. Vamos a chequear como canta Mariano y canta de todos los idiomas. Es una cosa fenomenal. Check this out and then we'll go back to me in the studio, all right? Linda flor de alborada, que botaste del suelo, la luz del cielo, tu capullo de sapa, de las rosas de un canto, el pensil de tu alma tan Loco de amor, siente celos de la fe, de la ira. Thank you. 